Hey everybody, John Ramdeen and Robin Black here with you in our FN studios. The UFC recently announcing they are done with Canadian light heavyweight standout Misha Serkinov. Uh, President Dana White says we just tried to come up uh, with some sort of an agreement that would make both sides happy. Uh, Serkinov not playing ball, so they're finished. Uh, uh, are, they, are they yeah. really finished? Part of negotiation sometimes is leaving the table. A and when you leave the table, you have to be serious that you really will turn down this television program you're being offered. You really will turn down this partnership in this business. You really will let this prospect leave. You have to be serious. So Dana's probably very serious that we will not, you know, this is as far as we'll go. But often, as is the case, that the other party, when somebody leaves the table, the other party can come back and go, okay, well, that last offer you made, let's re-examine it. And I have a feeling that's what'll happen here. Uh, let's say you're the fighter. Misha's a ta re very talented prospect who is on a roll, hasn't yet lost, and has finished everybody of the guys slowly getting closer to the top 10. So, Rumble Johnson's talking yeah. about him. Daniel Cormier yeah. talked about him. It's He's very, got the look. Yeah, it's, it's very, very it, yeah. talented, undeniable. So if you say we're done, you have to mean it, and you have to believe that they mean it. Why would somebody do that with a young prospect? Well, it's probably about money, and you do look and you say, we need 10 brilliant prospects to, and they know because they've been doing this for 20 years to ever get one champion. Why do we need Does that? Does the new company know that? That's sure, Joe Silva yeah. and Dana but White. Dana's the guy who probably negotiates still. A lot of, I was in Vegas a little, a little while ago, and the vibe I got is that the UFC uh, over time are probably much more in charge than they, than they might have been in the beginning. And why would that be? Because they know what they're doing. And when you buy this, a, a company like that, it's very complicated. And you get into the back of the machine, you're like, there's Band-Aids all over this thing. I don't know. Oh, only these guys really know how to run it. So they're probably doing that. Um, and they should be, because it's an incredibly complex one in a million business. Uh, but when you look at a prospect like that, why would you say we need 10 to really ever get one champion? Because over 20 years, you found that. You had these brilliant young fighters, and all of a sudden, one of their knees just gets destroyed. One of them turns out he can't win the big fights. Another one, something else happens. Somebody fails a drug test. You know over time that when you see these guys that have four or five wins and they look really good, you need a few of them. And since you need it to, for it to make one great one, and since you need a few of them, you have to pay them as if there are a few of them. So it becomes the reality. What will probably happen at some point is the other side, Misha's side, will go back and say, let's discuss that last offer, and they'll probably come to an agreement. And uh, that would be my guess. Well, now, I, but sorry to interrupt, yeah, no, at the same ahead. time, what Misha can do and probably is doing, let's see what they're saying yeah. over at, in Russia, yeah. Ryzen. Uh, now, that offer might end up being bigger, but you have to take that into consideration, too. What if this company goes out of business? What if it turns out that things fall through? It's a complex game. Uh, you know, uh, what if Bellator offers us mm -hmm. money? Now, if, and the other thing is, whatever uh, offer Misha may get, the UFC can then match. match. Right. But when you look at right now, it, it seems like Bellator is gaining a lot of steam. Now, we don't ever believe... Well, I don't ever believe that Bellator is going to ever rival the UFC as the number one promotion in the world. I think they're very satisfied being the healthy number mm -hmm. two organization in the world. So clearly that's an option for Misha Serkinov, and I'm sure Bellator and Scott Coker would be very, very interested. But as you pointed out, there's a show in Russia, there's uh, Ryzen in Japan, there's one FC. Do you believe he's going to be testing those waters? If somebody would give you $100,000 to fight in Japan or in Russia, uh, would you take it? Uh, you, Not the exclusive. Short, you, there's yeah. all these things yep. that, you know, be interesting for a fighter. For sure. And in the short run, you might. But then you're like, do I really want to go hunting down fights with no clear path for the next bunch of years of my prime? And that's why you often, the logic is to go back and take that deal. But a lot of this is conjecture. These are things that often happen. These are things that you, uh, that you see repeatedly. But we don't know what's going on behind that machine. We know that Misha has told people that we know that it's just, it's just negotiating, it's no big deal. And Dana has publicly said, hey, we're not in the Misha Sorkinov business. The truth is probably somewhere in between. They're in the middle of a negotiation and one, uh, one aspect of negotiation involves walking away from the table. I, for one, would not be shocked to see Misha Sorkinov back in the world's number one mixed martial arts promotion, the UFC.